Lexus NX got quite high-tech engines, and they are not so often found on other models. For most fans of the brand, the motors will seem unreasonably complex and not particularly reliable. The most common engine is a naturally aspirated 2-liter 3ZR FAE engine with 150 horsepower. It differs from most units in the 3ZR line by its valvomatic throttleless intake, otherwise it is a typical Toyota engine, aluminum block, cast iron liners, timing chain drive, simple and practical design overall. Traditionally, there are complaints about the short service life of the pump, the cracking of VTTI couplings, which are also present in other engines of this family, and an increased chance of cylinder head lifting with a cylinder head gasket rupture due to overheating. All this is complemented by specific problems with coking of the intake, breakdowns of the motor, and the valvomatic control unit. The appetite for oil is noticeably increased, and often even with short mileages topping up is required even at the traditional Toyota 10,000 service intervals. Therefore, owners add more viscous oil to reduce oil appetite. The reason is coking of weak oil scraper rings. Decarbonization helps, but with Dimexide you can easily kill the engine, the pan is painted, the design contains a lot of plastic that is not resistant to decarbonization. Toyota driver's fears regarding the 2-liter supercharged engine are unfounded. Engine 8 ARFTS with 238 horsepower output. It turned out to be quite strong, perhaps even more resourceful than the atmospheric 2-liter one. It has a better block, does not lift the cylinder head, does not have a strange throttleless intake, combined injection, and the intake valves do not become overgrown with a fur coat of carbon deposits. The service life of the piston group is even longer, which is not surprising, it is noticeably more massive. Hey buddy, looking for a used car? You should pay attention to the site Carmi.pro. Carmi.pro is huge catalog of cars, engines, gearboxes, and the best part is, you can find out about breakdowns of any part of any car, absolutely free. Go on Carmi.pro and be aware of all possible malfunctions. Carmi.pro Alas, to the typical problem with a weak pump was added the unreliable operation of the boost control system. It is classic, with a two-way solenoid valve that controls the bypass. It is the valve that fails, the motor is very underinflated, for normal operation it needs to be changed literally every 30,000 the filter inside, which was put there for some reason, becomes coked. Cheap Pierberg with Volkswagen works much more reliably. The C20 turbine is reliable, it rarely requires replacement up to 250,000 if the engine is not chipped. True, it has no performance reserve, and even if the engine is accelerated to 260 to 280 horsepower, the turbine dies quickly, even despite the enlarged intercooler. The motor is well configured and budget friendly in design, and is even more economical than the 3.5 GR series, and is not prone to oil burns. But the 8AR FTS is more complex than the average Lexus engine. It has dual injection, the ability to operate on the Atkinson cycle at low loads, a liquid intercooler, and the supercharging system itself. So the 8AR FTS is still many times more expensive to repair than conventional aspirated engines without all these bells and whistles. The hybrid engine is a 2.5 liter 2AR FXE and it is even slightly more reliable than the basic 2-liter naturally aspirated one. The cylinder head is more complicated, since this engine, like the supercharged one, can switch to the Atkinson cycle, but questions about the VCG arise less often and coking occurs. The piston version is more successful, there is no oil leakage, the chances of hitting the cylinder head gasket are much lower, and there are only a few cases of breakdowns. But he is also familiar with the troubles with the pump and the rattling of VVTI couplings. The NX has no complaints about the brakes. The 200T version has solid front discs with a diameter of 328mm. For the naturally aspirated version, the brakes are the same, so the brake performance seems even redundant. The discs are quite thin, only 28mm, but original ones rarely work, but non-original ones can be extremely unsuccessful. The front calipers are two-piston with a floating caliper, very reliable if they are not overheated. The rear discs are smaller, and the calipers are single-cylinder. 
The parking brake system is electrically driven and implemented through a screw mechanism on the rear calipers. Everything is done reliably, but sometimes the wiring fails and the price of geared motors goes through the roof. Now they cost at least 24,000 rubles. There are no serious questions about the stabilization system and the ABS unit. Owners note strong brake release on bumps and inadequate performance on bumpy snow surfaces, but there are no alternative firmwares as well as objective tests confirming the validity of the claims. The suspension is surprisingly good, the car handles pleasantly and copes well with bad roads. Even better than the older RX and much better than the LX. Speed bumps and noise bars are felt much less in the NX and there is no sway or vibration of the unsprung masses. In fact, with a working suspension, this is the most comfortable Lexus in the off-road line. It's a pity that even after driving for 50,000, the quality of the suspension deteriorates noticeably, but at the same time, it's difficult to call it faulty. There won't be any outright breakdowns, just a delicate balance collapses, the crossover becomes loose, and at the same time, much more sensitive to small irregularities. The MacPherson type front suspension is surprisingly reliable. For many car owners, the first serious repairs begin after driving for 200,000 kilometers. But at the same time, the front stabilizer struts and bushings last very little and sometimes require replacement at 30,000. There are also questions about the life of the shock absorbers. They do not leak even with a mileage well over 200, but the performance drops significantly and most of the loss in comfort and controllability is caused precisely by a change in their characteristics. Controlled shock absorbers also wear out, and in sports mode, the buildup of worn-out shock absorbers is accompanied by harsh passage of uneven surfaces. And the price of such shock absorbers is many times higher than that of conventional ones. And SHHH. Owners buy used shock absorbers from Japanese cars. They say it's better than taking something new and unoriginal. But the rear multi-link has a very bad front silent block of the trailing arm. It's all about the design. It taps when the slots in the rubber are closed. Toyota carried out a modernization. The cutouts were replaced with areas with a thinner layer of rubber and then with a solid silent block without any recesses or slots. The owners of RAV4 and NX upgraded the part themselves, inserting pieces of the timing belt into the slots because the original silent block lasts a long time but is supplied only assembled with a lever and non-original ones have a maximum resource of 60,000. As a result, you have to choose between comfort and service life. Otherwise, nothing much breaks in the rear suspension. After 100,000, the lower short arm may fail, it develops play in the ball joint. Very rarely, up to hundreds of thousands of kilometers, it is necessary to replace the silent block between the support arm and the hub, usually it lasts twice as long. Spring supports and bump stops are consumables with a service life that depends mainly on the load. For those who like to drive with a full interior and a loaded trunk, they could be replaced during the warranty period, but on cars with high mileage, such breakdowns are often simply ignored. In general, the suspension is reliable, and there are simply no obvious breakdowns of the main load-bearing elements, even in cars with 200,000 on the odometer. But if you don't change parts on time, then the NX doesn't drive so nicely, it loses comfort, and the suspension rattles. To return the car to its noble gait, you will have to repair the good one. The steering here is with a very simple electric power steering, the motor of which is located directly on the steering column. The rack is simple, quite strong, only afraid of torn anthers and requires updating the lubricant inside, which many owners find out too late. The system does not like voltage sags, but practically does not fail. And the fact that the reactive action on the steering wheel is damped and completely artificial is a trifle. Most NX owners do not pay attention to such nuances. If the Euro engine did not have the bad habit of whining a little during operation, then they would not even think about what kind of amplifier is there. The service life of steering tips is short, often hundreds of thousands of them are already replaced. But given the size of the wheels, this is expected. No problems with splines or CV joints were noted, but the service life of the drive shaft could have been higher. Most likely, this may be related to the all-wheel drive clutch. 
The bulk of cars in Russia have a naturally aspirated engine and AK-114F variator. Supercharged versions were equipped with a classic 6-speed U661 gearbox, well known to all Toyota fans. Well, the hybrid has its own transmission, the hybrid P314, paired with the rear-wheel drive unit Q211. For some reason, the K114F variator is considered a very reliable transmission. As a result, only some owners change the oil every 60,000, while many never change it and are faced with wear of the cone bearings and valve body and rotation of the oil pump bushing. This is not counting the worn-out gas turbine engine blocking lining for those who like to splurge in the mud. Questions appear quite early, especially in cold regions. After 120,000 mileage, twitching and simply falling into emergency mode is rather the norm for this box. In most cases, it is cheaper to buy a contract variator, fortunately the price even now starts from 50000 and the unit is diagnosed very well even by indirect signs such as the absence of chips on the magnets, and you can always look at the condition of the cones. But a full-fledged repair turns out to be golden, the price of the bulkhead flies into space due to the cost of the belt, bearings, and grinding slash replacing the cones. In most cases, owners drive until the last minute. As a result, the bearings turn in the housing, which makes repairs very difficult. Well, the pump itself is not ideally reliable if the bypass valve in the hydraulic unit is damaged, and if the oil is also dirty, it easily fails. In most cases, it is better to replace it with a new one. In general, Toyota CVTs are not always much more reliable than Jatco, and the K114F is a good example of this. True, the cars are quite heavy, but the engine is not so powerful as to give any concessions on the resource. It's just that the design isn't the best from the start. Even with good care and regular oil changes, the chance of bearing failure at mileage of about 200,000 is high. The situation is also complicated by the massive silence of users. As usual, Lexus owners belong to the but you can always sell the car at a high price sect and therefore the first rule of the club is not to tell anyone about possible breakdowns. The hydromechanical automatic U661F is a more predictable design. Largely because this box for a transverse arrangement has a crankcase with a hydraulic unit located at the bottom and is equipped with a filter accessible without completely disassembling the unit, which greatly increases the chances of a long life. Unfortunately, this transmission also breaks down, not only on the Camry 3.5, but also on the 2.0 turbo engine in the NX. Basically, the failure of the central bearing of the housing occurs, it is rather weak, and, like on Mazda, it is destroyed by almost every owner, the only question is at what mileage. Moreover, on this box for Toyota models, this nuance had already been eliminated by the time the NX was released by reconfiguring the operating algorithms so as not to overload the unit. But Lexus gave preference to dynamics over reliability. Failures occur regularly, and the bearing must be changed immediately. If you tighten it, this risks breaking the automatic transmission housing, which is not interchangeable with other models since the housing contains an additional pump for the start-stop system. And work on boring the bearing seat, which not every service will undertake, is expensive and requires highly qualified mechanics. If you don't change the oil, but anneal it more often, then the box will ask for a bulkhead even earlier than the variator, usually it doesn't reach hundreds of thousands in this mode. With regular oil changes, the first overhauls begin after 150,000 kilometers, so you can forget about trouble-free operation. The underdrive hub bearings are also weak and prone to failure before 200,000. The roller bearings of planetary gears suffer when play appears, and they are almost always replaced as a set. Along the way, they usually change the rather weak pistons of the packages. Malfunctions often appear with the direct drum, clutches C1 and C2, brakes B1, B3 burn out. There are pressure leaks along the Teflon rings of the rear cover. And the valve body does not last forever, errors occur on the selector position board and wear on the channels, but this usually occurs after miles well over 250 and after several repairs to the mechanical part. In addition, the torque converter locking lining on the gearbox wears out very badly, and on the gas turbine engine, the bushing is also welded to the hub. 
Hey buddy, looking for a used car? You should pay attention to the site Carmi.pro. Carmi.pro is huge catalog of cars, engines, gearboxes, and the best part is you can find out about breakdowns of any part of any car absolutely free. Go on Carmi.pro and be aware of all possible malfunctions. Carmi.pro In general, this is far from the most reliable hydraulic machine, but with the use of repair pistons with grinding, bearings, regular oil changes, and gentle operation, it can work quite stably. So far everything is in order with spare parts. Contract boxes are also available at a price of about 50,000 rubles. You can also repair your own, although it will be much more expensive. And only the hybrid version can boast of the most reliable transmission. The P314 ECVT transmission is a really strong thing. In any case, the main complaints about the system are related to the wiring and batteries. The box itself rarely fails. The service life of the rear axle drive clutch FD13 on the NX leaves much to be desired. Owners of cars that have run even less than 100,000 complain about jerks during its operation or complete inoperability. In most cases, it's all about contamination with friction wear products, bearing failures, or electrical problems. Bulkheading, lubrication, and cleaning save the day. Repair kits are available for sale. Hybrids have an electric motor on the rear axle, and it is reliable, but the power is limited. The external inspection should be approached carefully, no inspections in the evening or in the rain. The paintwork is very weak and thin, and therefore the chances that there will be bugs on the car are very high. Naturally, the older the car, the greater the chances. In addition, the metal is very soft. As a result, the NX often has a lot of small dents. You should specifically look for traces of corrosion mainly on the upper edge of the roof and in places where there is sand blasting or where mud flaps and linings touch the body panels. There are chances to detect paint blisters at the joints of body panels and bumpers, rear arches, and door edges. Lexus NX confidently maintains its price, so in most cases the body panels are repainted on time. With an average cost of 2.5 million, most owners are able to fork out 200,000 for high quality painting and are not greedy. Visible corrosion in this situation is a very bad sign. Numerous scratches adorn all cars that have not been wrapped in film, coated with ceramics, or have not recently left the body shop gates. This is not as bad as corrosion. Moreover, with a thin paintwork thickness, too frequent polishing can damage the varnish layer. So owners are often content with using wax polishes and other auto chemicals. And yet, you should avoid particularly advanced cases. The chances of corrosion of the outer panels greatly increase. And why do you need a car on which you saved a lot? Fortunately, there is a choice of NX. There are now 5,000 cars on sale across the country, and you can find a relatively well-maintained one, because most owners spare no expense in maintaining a ceremonial appearance. From below, the NX is almost not covered with plastic panels, as is now common with premium European brands, and even a simple inspection on a lift gives food for thought. Abundant minor corrosion on all open elements of the rear part of the bottom, in the wheel arches and on the sills of specimens literally five years after use in Moscow or St. Petersburg hints that the body here is not long-lasting. The problems are the same as with the older TLC 200. All the elements on the bottom are in the risk zone, but there is no frame, so there are no problems with the number stamped on it. The area above the muffler on the left rear is especially rusty. On the other hand, above the tank, corrosion is not so noticeable. Well, the part of the body near the mounting point of the rear suspension arm is also marked by an abundance of dirt and, as a result, corrosion. In the rear arches of the NX from the first years of production, rust is already at ease, creeping away from the seams and technological plugs. In the front, corrosion is mainly observed in the upper part, at the strut supports. Be careful with specimens that have undergone anti-corrosive treatment. In most cases, it is done directly over the rust, so carefully inspect whether there are traces of the body panels being cleaned or whether it is just a layer hiding the real state of affairs. Almost all problems that occur with locks, mirrors, wipers, bumper mounts, and headlights are associated with past accidents, poor quality repairs, or careless handling. 
well, or they have a purely electrical reason, which we'll talk about below. Moreover, the service, which is as loyal to the owners as possible, tries to correct all defects during the warranty period. As a result, the list of typical problems is very small and vague. Among the common troubles, one can note the tendency of windshields to crack in cold weather, and the rear window is easily rubbed in those who like to use the rear wiper. And the sides are quite soft, you can come across cars with scratches, although there are only a few of them. Old cars with LED optics, as well as imported ones without a transparent biography, have examples of yellowing of the luminous flux, but so far they are isolated. Moreover, this defect was noted only in top-end optics with 12 LEDs. With a less advanced and weaker version, this either did not happen or was simply not noticed. The lack of a tire pressure monitoring system on most cars in Russia is not a great drawback since the owners already know where and what units to install in order to retrofit the car. The side doors close with an unpleasant sound and owners install special spacers on the locks. Yes, yes, like on a Ziguli. In general, the prevalence of collective farm small tuning causes bad associations, but the reason is not so much the owners as the abundance of elements of such tuning on the Chinese and Asian markets and its availability. Weak hinges and the hood latch became the reason for a recall campaign, but even the parts of the new model leave the hood quite mobile. Combined with very thin metal and a flexible frame, this creates a curious effect. At high speeds, drivers notice the hood playing, it shakes as if it is about to open or come off. Unsuccessful external cameras are rather a general flaw in the electronics of cars of that generation. Here they are located poorly, and they are filled well. But the main complaint is still about the cloudy and noisy picture. Well, it's not worth mentioning the cloudy chrome inserts, in our climate they don't last long and only with the most careful owners. If past generations of Lexus were often criticized for their wooden interior, then during the release of the first NX the company completely changed its attitude towards the quality of materials. Here in most trim levels there is very soft and delicate leather and excellent soft plastic, a lot of elegant gloss. In general, the interior design is very expressive and even provocative. It's a pity that after the first 100,000 mileage, signs of wear are already difficult to hide. The leather on the steering wheel gets worn out, the leather on the seats gets wrinkled, and it can even become frayed on the armrests. With the use of modern chemistry, all this can be easily corrected, and in general, you come across cars with mileage well over 200,000 and with very good interiors. And yet, in most cases, after 100,000, the interior is already a little shabby, or this is a sign of a very twisted mileage, which, unfortunately, is easily corrected they have even learned to change the mileage in the srs unit this was the last bastion of truth literally until recently it's a pity that the multimedia system is not very advanced and in winter its interface is also very slow the sound quality is acceptable and complaints are mainly about functionality and stability the climate system also fails a not very successful stove block easily blooms and requires frequent filter replacement and regular disinfection. The owners note that in the summer there is an unpleasant smell from the climate and users often suffer from colds. The gear motors of the climate control dampers are unsuccessful, they have a short potentiometer life. Half of them cannot be removed without disassembling the entire front panel of the cabin, which greatly increases the cost of repairs. The NX's fairly simple and stable electrical system is nevertheless the main source of failures for various equipment. The failure of power windows, wipers, washers, headlight range control and the like is almost always associated with another sour contact. Diagnosis is mediocre, this is far from a European who will tell more about himself than can be found during examination. But it's also easy to repair. There's relatively little wiring, it's all visible, and the quality is quite high. There is only one truly serious problem. It is associated with the installation of anti-theft systems and numerous interventions in the standard wiring for this reason. The most serious problems with the operation of the internal combustion engine, automatic transmission, and global electrical failures are often associated with this kind of work. 
and you will have to come to terms with this. The Lexus NX is still at the top in terms of theftability, and even the hood locks will not help here. Let me remind you, it is extremely flimsy. The electrics of the hybrid version are much more complicated, but it is too early to talk about any serious breakdowns. In most cases, the cause of the problem is poor cooling of the converters or degradation of the battery pack due to long periods of downtime. 